Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and I am here today to make a little home decor piece using the latest not too shabby box of the month kit and this piece from the Dollar Tree. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Earlier this month, I shared a couple looks at the latest box of the month kit from Not Too Shabby. I will pop those pictures up on screen now so you can see them. And if you would like to see how I made either of those projects, I will have those videos linked in that description box below. Today, I thought I would kind of step out of my box a little bit and make an altered Dollar Tree home decor item with the kit. This just shows you that you don't always have to use your kit to make cards. Now, if you're interested in purchasing the kit, which there are like a handful left, I do have a link in the description box below. There is already a small discount on buying it all together, but if you subscribe, you save even more and you're assured that you get a kit the next month. Now also in the description box below, I have a coupon code. Now it can't be used on the kit, but Not Too Shabby carries lots of other brands and products as well as their own products over on their shop. So if you want to take advantage of that discount, it is in the description box below. I'll go ahead and tell you kind of the basic supplies I'm gonna be using. If I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can put those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. From the kit, I will be using the 4x9 slimline pad, a couple pieces from the Artsy Gals 6x6 paper pad. I am using one of the three packages of ephemera, and this is the one with the smallest pieces in it. Those fit better on my little frame or decor piece here and then I got out this stamp set as well which is called color my world and I'm thinking about using this little paint splatter here now, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it will work but I did go ahead and get it out here in the middle you'll see the ephemera pieces I chose for my decor piece and then over on the left are the items from my own stash I got out an English Rose alphabet die set. Now, unfortunately, this is pretty old, but if you have newer font sets or you have a Cricut or Silhouette, you could cut out your words using that. I'm going to try to stamp that paint swoosh or paint spot over here with Gina K Designs Turquoise Sea Ink. I got out a couple little foam paint brushes and, of course, the piece from the Dollar Tree. Let's get crafty. Before I get started today, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to Paper Trimmer Level Membership to Beth Robinson, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. To get started today, I applied some Mod Podge, which is also from the Dollar Tree, with a small foam brush. I thought this might help the paint stick to the piece because it was pretty slick. Now you might be able to sand this down a little bit too, just to get some grab, but because I knew I was going to use Mod Podge later on anyway, I just used that since I had it out. Once all of the edges were coated, I set that to the side to dry, and while that was drying, I brought in the pieces of ephemera that I was going to use on the frame, and I just cut those down so the border around the edge was a little bit smaller. Now I know that I will use white paint, but I just thought this would help me be able to put the pieces close together for the final piece. 
The Mod Podge was dry to the touch once I had cut down the ephemera, so it was time to start painting. And this is basically the same thing. I'm just going to use white acrylic paint and just cover up all of the sides. Now you'll see here that on the back of the frame there is a little place to hang it on the wall, and that is what I held on to while I painted it. It was super handy. Once I had one coat down, I did let it dry for probably about 10 minutes and I did do two coats all the way around the outside edges and I added a third to the front where the image was just because some of that was still showing through. While I work a little more on the painting, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Since I switched it up a little bit today to make this decor piece, I would like to know, besides card making, do you enjoy any other crafts or hobbies? If so, what are those? I would love for you to answer this in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. I mainly do card making now, but I have been a big paper crafting fan for probably a couple decades. Whether that was cards, scrapbooking, mini albums, pocket letters, altered items like this with paper. I do enjoy to do that. Now when I was little I did some cross stitching and sewing, but I always seem to come back to card making. After each coat of paint, I would let this dry for at least 15 to 20 minutes, and while that was drying, I tried to work on other parts of the frame. The first of those being die cutting the letters for the piece later. I will be using this pink and it looks like glittered piece from the slimline paper pad, and I chose my letters and then die cut that off screen. After the coats of paint had dried, which like I mentioned before, I did two on everything and three on the front, I brought in a piece of pattern paper from the 6x6 pad and I cut that down into strips that were 1 and 1 8 inches wide. This is going to cover all the way around the outside edges and there was even a little bit left over. I brought back in that Mod Podge and I applied my paper strips to the outside edges. I just put down a layer of the Mod Podge and then pressed each of the pattern papers down into that. It's just kind of like a glue and also a coating if you've never used this before. Now I'm not going to put the top coat on yet, I'm going to wait until I have everything glued down. You might have already noticed that on the top of this piece I had tested out my paint splatter stamp. Um, I knew that it was going to be covered up later and I just wanted to see how it looked. On the top and bottom I did have to piece the strips together and I would just place down the first one for the full 6 inches and then I cut off a little bit with my paper trimmer for the other piece. Now this did a leave a little bit too much wide at the end so this will actually end up being the bottom when I do the final piece. I continued this until all of the sides were covered and then I moved on to the front. Before I spread any Mod Podge on the front, I did go ahead and lay out all of my ephemera and my die cut letters on it so I knew what the spacing would look like for the final piece. Once everything was laid down and spaced out like I liked it, I would remove each piece or a couple pieces at a time, put down some Mod Podge, and then place the pieces into it. When I got to placing the F down, I did have to bring in a little pair of scissors and cut off the tail because I am going to set this flat on a shelf so that would not have worked. After I had all of the elements glued down, I did set this off to the side again and I let it dry for 20 minutes before bringing it back in for the top coat. Now here I do want to point out that on my mat I tested stamping on the white paint and on the Mod Podge and unfortunately it wasn't going to work when I went to put my top coat on later so I did have to skip adding the stamp. 
but once that had dried the bottom coat, I brought back in the Mod Podge and I put a layer on all of the sides. And you'll see here that at the top where the little girl's head hangs off, I did put some on the back of that piece of ephemera too. I just thought this might add a little bit more stability. Once again, after this had had a coat, I set it to the side to dry. And here is a look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's altar decor piece. I'm kind of sad that I couldn't use the little paint swatch stamp, but in the end I think it turned out cute and will make a nice little addition to my craft room. If you did enjoy the video, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.